Hey guys, um, 9.53am in Tasmania on the 16th, yep, I've got my phone on aeroplane mode at the moment, this is now the third time I've tried to make this video, it was 40 minutes to start with, then 20, and now I'm trying again. First of all, the audio didn't work. Then secondly, a random phone call came in that stopped the screen recorder from working. So this is my third go. We'll see if I can get through it. I've had an extremely frustrating start to the day and been under tons of attack. <sighs> I'm so tired and burnt out and frustrated and feeling depressed um, and I'm sure everybody else is at the same time. There's a couple of things I want to talk about just quickly. The very first thing that I want to get off my chest is that and uh, no, I don't like doing this at all, but I'm going to. <sighs> cool Cat has lost his mind, I'm telling you. That guy is crazy. He has a an extremely nasty spirit. He He's on there attacking poor old Repo Man now, seriously, in one of his videos. And, you know, I'm going to stand up here and say that I think Mike is one of the most solid channels. He's a hard worker. He's got a very good Christian ethic and uh, has a nice, calming way about him. Uh, he, Mike is doing his best like everybody else. And what Kelly's on there, suggesting that Mike needs to make one genuine prayer in his life and that's to ask God whether he should shut his channel down and he's sure that God will tell Mike that he should. This guy is mad. Look, I, I wouldn't care if his every bit of his study is correct now and he's actually nailed a rapture date. Not, I, I wouldn't even care. Out of principle, for the attitude that that man portrays, and uh, the attitude that he has towards other people, we need to unsubscribe from his channel. Everybody, everybody listening, to give him a message. He's already lost about four, five hundred subs from his last antics. So I cannot imagine how this is going to work out for you, Kelly. And you deserve it. You totally deserve this rebuke from God. You are a very nasty person. Anyway, I'm leaving that one there. I don't think I can really scroll through my feed much because I've turned off the, um, I've turned it on to aeroplane mode so I'm not getting into the net reception so that I don't get bothered by phone calls, etc. again. Uh, just briefly, there's a lot of people, we've passed our 14, we're in uh, 15. People looking at ADAR, people looking at Purim, a uh, Repo Man's Purim in February or, or the Jewish Purim that they celebrated in March. Uh, channels like um, Gevti, I think we're looking at 23rd of Jan being the outside date for the rapture. What I want to say, though, is yes, we are kicking this can down the road a lot. I've noticed that now. We are all starting to grab at straws. This rapture has to be soon, or quite simply, the math no longer works for the fig ship tree generation, and that's the end of it. It's that simple. Now, I believe it's 1950, because the, the law of the Knesset passed for the, to allow Jews to come back into the land and the establishment of Israel as a capital. But be it 1948, 49 or 50, when you're at your 80 or actually 81 years, so that your full 80 years have been complete, Take off seven years, it has to happen by 2024, has to. Now, if we were going by a specific uh, time marker, say when the Knesset um, passed this law in 1950, then we might have to until the, the day before that date. So if it was, say, 
hypothetically, and I don't know what the date was, if it was September 20th, then we'd have till September 19th, 2024, at the most. Um, however, uh, I, I honestly don't think we can possibly go past the new year in March. Uh, past that, I just don't see the fig tree generation lining up at all anymore. And I know people have started to use, instead of 80 minus the seven years, I've started to use like 75 years, Israel's age, um, uh, with um, our Noah, uh, not know how Abraham was 75 years, but um, once again, once we pass the Jewish New Year, that's gone. That one's gone too. So the convergence is all for now, but I have no ability to tickle anybody's ears today. I don't know where we're at. Not at all. Um, I don't know what Kelly's saying. Uh, the moment I got to his horrible comments towards Mike, I stopped watching and I never intend to watch anything he produces again. So I'm not too sure where we're at with that. It seems as usual when our date periods or watch times pass, I lose a few subs. also lost a few the other day because I had to call out that lady that was posting. She, she was spam spamming the channel, basically. Um, like, you know, I prayed for her and I seriously am praying for her and I love her. Um... I looked at her channel, she'd obviously lost a husband, there's a lot of grief there, but she has somehow, through the grief of losing her husband, etc., come up with this sort of Gnostic belief that, you know, it's more than just a trinity in heaven, G Jesus and God are up there with their wife, um, she's the one that from all wisdom comes from, uh, so there's a trinity plus one now. And then the abuse and the horrible things she said once I started pointing out simple questions like, well, women aren't meant to teach, so well, she's not allowed to speak up there. And what happens if she's unclean during the month? Uh, does Jesus send her off somewhere? You know, all these sorts of things. The, the, the doctrine was ridiculous and it was definitively salvational. And two other people, incidentally, these other people that comment, uh, you know, their, their username is, um, user sort of thing. It's it's like it's a robot or a spam generated thing. But they jumped on there and yeah, yeah, that's definitely right. Jesus has a wife up there, and I think this poor lady wants to be united with her husband and have you know the normal marriage thing back again, to the point where she actually believes once we get to heaven, that's how it's going to be. You know, we can all pick a wife, get married, that sort of stuff. Her husband's up there already waiting for her, so she'll just sort of restart things from where she left off down here on earth oh my lord there's no marriage in heaven it says that there's a trinity there's not a trinity plus a wife uh, please pray for that lady uh, her, her doctrine is definitely a sal salvational one and uh, she's heading for the pit with that doctrine the last thing that I want to talk about and, I, and look I can't say much about a rapture date i'm just watching every day between now and first date is would be january 23rd next one would be uh february when uh, mike says purim should really uh, be celebrated and i think if the jews are celebrating at march 23 this year then it'll be february 23 uh and out and the last date past that for me is the head of the year march 16, 17. Um, so they're the only things I can say about the rapture. I am depressed today. I've had a drama trying to get these things done. I feel very sad for, for Mike and the things Kelly said. It's just been a nasty start to the day. It really has. Um, oh, I'm going to have to turn that airplane mode back on. Back online. This is the thing, there, guys. The Look, rope I'm, around oops. on the priest's leg. That's the video. Uh, yeah. You go to about the 30-minute mark a bit before and 
You see poor old Mike's getting a bash in there. This is wrong, my friend. You're calling out a good, solid channel for no good reason other than your own ego and the belief that everything that you're teaching is correct and nobody else is wrong. So, Kelly, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, right? You've been warned by a brother once, you need to stop it. Okay. Oh, that made me angry. Really, it made me angry. Like, I, I, I punched my, my desk and everything here. Like, I was so, so wild with that. You know, like how Jesus turned over the t tables and the money changes in the, in the temple? Yeah, that kind of wild. That's how I was. Anyway, here's an interesting one. I want to finish off on a note where it gives Jesus all the praise and glory if I can. I had a post going, 67 votes, a uh, poll, 67 votes altogether. <coughs> Excuse me. The gist of it was you'd had a bad day, you'd sinned, you realised that, you come home and you wanted to talk to a father about it. How should you ask him or talk to him in prayer? Should you say, Father God, I've sinned many times today, please forgive me, please forgive me, Lord, you know, in the name of Jesus, by his blood and his sacrifice. Or should you say, Father God, I know I am a sinner. Thank you, Lord, that you've forgiven me. And for most of the poll, it was polling opposite to how we see it now, there on the screen. Um, but it swapped around, and I was so glad that it swapped around. Because did you know, if you pray every single day asking Jesus to forgive you through his sacrifice um, for the sins that you've committed that day, then you're praying a works-based prayer. We were forgiven all of our sins, past, present and future, at the moment of our salvation. Okay? We do not have to, like a zealot or a Pharisee, you know, continually pray the same repetitive prayer all the time because we have already been forgiven. All of our sins, even the ones we haven't committed, the ones we have committed, the ones we're committing right now, and the ones we haven't yet committed, they're all forgiven, they're gone, washed away by the blood of Jesus. How amazing. So if you truly want to um now people might try and refute me by saying by by saying the lord's prayer right the disciples asked jesus how should we pray and he said this is how you should pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and you know the rest of the prayer so they may say, Jesus said there, forgive us our trespasses. In other words, ask for forgiveness. But who was telling them that? Jesus. He hadn't died yet. He hadn't willingly given up his perfect sinless life and shed his blood for us yet. The disciples were being instructed how to pray at that particular time and that's how they were to pray to the Father and to ask for forgiveness of sins. We don't have to. Now the Bible does say confess your sins one to another. Now that doesn't mean in a Roman Catholic sort of a way where you have to say it before a priest. And it doesn't mean you have to confess your sins one to another. What it means is Say, for example, you've got to get best buddy, somebody you can tell anything to. You're both Christians. He becomes your accountability partner, if you so choose. And you, you can confess those sins to him and use each other for support and a sounding board and help. That's God's suggestion as to, as, as to a way that we can keep sin at bay. You know, Confessing your sins to one another is a good way to do that. You know, it keeps you accountable to one another. But that doesn't mean you run down into the mall in town and start yelling out your sins, you know, like confessing them to everybody. Or that you have to go have to go into a church and confess them to a certain pastor or 
um, priest or whatever. No, it doesn't mean that at all. So the way to truly, truly acknowledge Jesus in your prayers is to, is to confess your sins to, to our Father. That way, you know, an acknowledgement of your sin is recognition of the fact that God's word is true. Okay? So confess your sins to our Father and to other people if you want to, if you have people, those sorts of people in your life, but this is how you talk to our God. Confess your sins to God. Repentance is metanoia. That's a, a change of direction, a change of mind. You know, that doesn't mean the physical act of getting down onto your knees every day and for, and begging for forgiveness. Because what if you didn't do it for a week and then you died? You stand before God and he, what's he going to say? Yep, whole life was forgiven, but uh, yeah, mate, we've just got this issue with that last week cover. Hmm, we better have a little chatsy about that one. No, doesn't work like that. They're all gone. They're all gone. Past, present and future. So the way to truly give thanks to our Father for that and acknowledge that is to say, Father God, I am a sinner. I've sinned today. I've done this, that and the other. I truly thank you, Lord, in the name of our Saviour Jesus that he has forgiven those sins. That's how you truly give it over to God because our works are but filthy rags. That includes getting down every day on your knees and saying, Father, I've done this again, please forgive me. That's like the Pharisees and the Zealots and, uh, you know, repetitive prayer and ritual. That's what that's like. Acknowledge that our Lord was perfect. He lived a perfect, sinless life. He's the only person that did. The only way to the Father is through the Son and that it was his blood and his blood alone that saves us. You acknowledge that in your prayer by saying to him, thank you for forgiving those sins, Jesus. Your death was so powerful that it forgave my sins, past, present and future. I accept that gift. Lord, I accept that gift and I thank you for it. That's how we truly give thanks and how we truly re acknowledge our sinful nature before our Father. Because in doing it like that, you give so much power. Jesus takes all the power again. It wasn't something that we had to ritualistically do every day down on our knees. We acknowledged there and then when we confess these sins to our Father that we thank you, Lord, that we are already forgiven. God bless, guys. Stay encouraged. The rapture has to happen every day, any day. The fig tree generation is running out. The math does not work. I don't think past March, unless it's got something to do with associated with that um, date that I was talking about with the Knesset, which I haven't researched yet, or perhaps the establishment as Israel as a, a, Ju a Jerusalem as a um, capital. Because remember, God raises up governments and you know creates capital cities and all those sorts of things are put into play by God. He controls those things. So a nation truly isn't a nation until it's set up just like all the other nations around it and recognised as such by those nations, as per Luke, the fig tree and all the trees. Anyway... Give it over to Jesus, guys. We must be getting close. The spiritual warfare is great. And uh, I am so sick of being here. I want to go. I truly want to go. Love you all.